Dear organizers of the meeting, ladies and gentlemen, Munich Leadership Conference. Now, Munich is easy. It's been defined as the paradise. <laughs> the conference is the exchange of people and thoughts, <coughs> movement of minds, but leadership is difficult. Leadership is truly difficult and uh, it depends uh, a lot of the environment of the um, uh, challenges you are facing. Leadership means certainly role model in almost every single case, depending on which level leadership is uh, applied. Getting up one half hour earlier than others. That's also maybe part of leadership. <laughs> Sometimes very efficient, by the way. Being honest and straight, definitely an element of the character of a person, which gives credibility to what he and he says and does, how they perform. Take, taking care of people and uh, like that, very simple terms. Critically reflect whether an identified weakness in a person may be turned to a strength. And finally, inspiring people um, support their individual strengths. So that's in brief what you could say on leadership, but uh, much more could be uh, discussed here. Now, to achieve uh, true progress, that's the title of this meeting. Again, very difficult. What is true and what is progress? So even more difficult, what is true progress? But achievement is still fine because uh, that's uh, a uh, milestone on a development that you can see or describe. But uh, <coughs> true progress. Progress certainly is what you actively shape and what you experience uh, today. Um, to say it uh, very briefly, in a comprehensive view. Um, and that means that uh, progress, uh, as to all of our experience, uh, develops in a inspiring and a fruitful environment. So progress is always, always covered to the problem, to the question, to the challenge, to the person, and to the society in which this person acts. Um, let me first say, ladies and gentlemen, how much I appreciate the idea of the Center of Digital Technologies Munich, CDTM. I had already been in office when this wonderful u uh, unit was uh, chartered by the two uh, Munich State uh, Universities. And I very much like the MLI Leadership Institute. Thank you that you uh, take care of this meeting today to discuss problems or ask questions that cannot be resolved but to which you get better ideas depending on from which side uh, you shine light on the question. People like Martin uh, Luther King, John F. Kennedy, uh, Nelson Mandela and Steve Jobs have proven the power of a strong and positive vision. Even though our former Bundeskanzler Helmut Schmidt stated, who has a vision should visit his doctor. <laughs> Today, you will be investigating sources of progress. And you am sure you will ask what is progress, what uh, is the elements and characteristics of progress not just of new trends that are hyped in the media, 
but uh, real underlying principles and circumstances of progress. In uh, my opinion, progress very much is connected with uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Because entrepreneurial spirit is also not to be easily defined, but it is an attitude how to behave towards challenges, to take responsibility yourself to tackle a problem and solve it. Um, as an entrepreneurial university, uh, this is our position to uh, not only um, complain about uh, having too little money in the university, knowing that everybody of us in every circumstance in the life has too little money, but uh, takes care of the responsibility, earning more money, broaden the financial basis of the university uh, to be able uh, to uh, expand the scope of disciplines becoming more and more interdisciplinary to give you just one idea of our philosophy for which indeed you need money but especially you need uh, the people. We can influence the preconditions and we can create an environment that enables innovation and progress. That's by the way the job of leaders to provide others with the uh, opportunities and the framing conditions uh, to produce progress. <coughs> what then turns uh, out to be a real progress uh, is uh, once again hard to predict and it is often more a surprise. Uh, uh, in the Anglo-Saxonian world it's called serendipity and in many cases in my former scientific career I faced serendipity and the most interesting uh, discoveries uh, we made my discipline, experimental chemistry, came along by serendipity. However, it's not the sheer sufat. But serendipity means that there is an innovative, fruitful environment available. That there is a positive mind uh, in which people are immersed and from which they get the encouragement to tackle a problem, to speak about unresolved problems, to activate their own brain and not let others think for themselves. Originality. So the environment, it is the environment that in many cases uh, of great successes improves or spurs the progress as you have seen, um, as you have seen just in the introduction. Silicon Valley in the 70s, it was a primeval soup of innovation, the combination of research, hippie culture and business, creating a most inspiring atmosphere. Inspiration, um, fantasy, uh, creativity. It's also, um, att uh, attributes of the philos philosophy of our university, by the way, because it's the job of university to improve innovation, freedom, uh, and creativity. And it needs the frame conditions. That doesn't mean that everybody can do what he or she thinks at any time spot. There's also a strategy, there is also a commitment to loyalty within the community, even of a university. Or bite. There's people who don't uh, believe that, even some professors don't think that uh, loyalty is, is an important uh, element of uh, common success. Did the IT freaks of that time in the Silicon Valley expect what the homebrew computer club later turned out to be. That this was um, the hotbed for companies like Apple and ideas like the shared economy. 
Very likely, no. And that is why it is important to try out new things and to overcome your way of thinking which you are used to. To overcome the common thinking day by day. This is one of my philosophies, by the way. You have to be ready every day to change your thoughts and to change the lines of thinking. And uh, the greatest impediment for progress, especially in the professional environment like a university, is the fact and the observation that uh, there's people who are not used to change their thinking who adhere to what they have been socialized in for years and decades. And that is also in the leadership the greatest problem to be overcome. And that means you have to talk to many, many, many people and convince them to think differently. Because the world has changed around us. Still, still live for your principles. There is no doubt in that. Now if we and if you discuss um, progress, you shouldn't forget that progress is not only something that is uh, connected with the brain. It's the brain and the heart. Because otherwise, many people would not be considered to participate in the progress. Um, when people who helped me preparing uh, this little speech um, wrote down their thoughts, they also said that at one point, they, they said a uh, reasonable things, uh, most, of, most of which I didn't say today. But, um, <laughs> at one point they said, uh, progress that means also well, the openness, solution, mindset, they say, that's fine. Access to education and money. And the money I crossed out. The money, yes, depending on what is the progress uh, to be, to be uh, uh, moved forward. But in many cases, it's not, not the money. In many cases, it's the mindset, uh, the attitude to things, the interaction with people. Um, and uh, for that reason, it's uh, also a progress uh, if uh, somebody helps a handicapped person to cross the street. This is also progress. And because this is a community forming contribution, and please uh, don't, you are young people, very young people, don't forget that uh, if uh, an elderly person like me tells you, uh, it's really the combination of brain and heart, never forget that, and don't forget the heart side, which is the real heart side. <laughs>